Women's suffrage, colloquial, female suffrage, woman suffrage or women's right to vote is the right of women to vote in elections. A person who advocates the extension of suffrage, particularly to women, is called a suffragist. Limited voting rights were gained by women in Finland, Iceland, Sweden and some Australian colonies and western US states in the late 19th century. National and international organizations formed to coordinate efforts to gain voting rights, especially the International Woman Suffrage Alliance founded in 1904, Berlin, Germany, and also worked for equal civil rights for women. In 1881, the Isle of Man gave women who owned property the right to vote. In 1893, the British colony of New Zealand granted women the right to vote. The colony of South Australia did the same in 1894 and all women were able to vote in the next election, which was held in 1896. South Australia also permitted women of any race to stand for election alongside men, and was the first in the world to allow women to stand for election. In 1899 Western Australia enacted full women's suffrage, enabling women to vote in the constitutional referendum of 31 July 1900 and the 1901 state and federal elections. In 1902 women in the remaining four colonies also acquired the right to vote and stand in federal elections after the six Australian colonies federated to become the Commonwealth of Australia. Discriminatory restrictions against Aboriginal people, including women, voting in national elections, were not completely removed until 1962. The first European country to introduce women's suffrage was the Grand Duchy of Finland, then part of the Russian Empire, which elected the world's first women members of parliament in the 1907 parliamentary elections. Norway followed, granting full women's suffrage in 1913. Denmark followed in 1915, and Russian provisional government in 1917. Most independent countries enacted women's suffrage in the interwar era, including Canada in 1917, Britain over 30 in 1918, over 21 in 1928, Germany, Poland in 1918, Austria and the Netherlands in 1919, and the United States in 1920. Voting Rights Act of 1965 secured voting rights for racial minorities. Leslie Hume argues that the First World War changed the popular mood. The women's contribution to the war effort challenged the notion of women's physical and mental inferiority and made it more difficult to maintain that women were, both by constitution and temperament, unfit to vote. If women could work in munitions factories, it seemed both ungrateful and illogical to deny them a place in the polling booth. But the vote was much more than simply a reward for war work. The point was that women's participation in the war helped to dispel the fears that surrounded women's entry into the public arena. Late adopters in Europe were Spain in 1933, France in 1944, Italy in 1946, Greece in 1952, San Marino in 1959, Monaco in 1962, Andorra in 1970, Switzerland in 1971 at federal level, and at local canton level between 1959 in the cantons of Vaud and Neuchâtel and 1991 in the canton of appenzell Innerrhoden and Liechtenstein in 1984. In addition, although women in Portugal obtained suffrage in 1931, this was with stronger restrictions than those of men. Full gender equality in voting was only granted in 1976. The United States gave women equal voting rights in all states with the 19th Amendment ratified in 1920. Brazil implemented full voting rights for women in 1932. Canada and some Latin American nations passed women's suffrage before World War II while the vast majority of Latin American nations established women's suffrage in the 1940s, with the exception of Uruguay in 1917 see table in summary below. The last Latin American country to give women the right to vote was Paraguay in 1961. In December 2015, women were first allowed to vote in Saudi Arabia municipal elections. Extended political campaigns by women and their supporters have generally been necessary to gain legislation or constitutional amendments for women's suffrage. In many countries, limited suffrage for women was granted before universal suffrage for men, for instance, literate women or property owners were granted suffrage before all men received it. The United Nations encouraged women's suffrage in the years following World War II, and the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women 1979 identifies it as a basic right with 189 countries currently being parties to this convention. History In ancient Athens, often cited as the birthplace of democracy, only adult, male citizens who owned land were permitted to vote. 
Through subsequent centuries, Europe was generally ruled by monarchs, though various forms of parliament arose at different times. The high rank ascribed to abbesses within the Catholic Church permitted some women the right to sit and vote at national assemblies, as with various high-ranking abbesses in medieval Germany, who were ranked among the independent princes of the empire. Their Protestant successors enjoyed the same privilege almost into modern times. Marie Guyard, a French nun who worked with the First Nations peoples of Canada during the 17th century, wrote in 1654 regarding the suffrage practices of Iroquois women. These female chieftains are women of standing amongst the savages, and they have a deciding vote in the councils. They make decisions there like the men, and it is they who even delegated the first ambassadors to discuss peace." The Iroquois, like many First Nations peoples in North America, had a matrilineal kinship system. Property and descent were passed through the female line. Women elders voted on hereditary male chiefs and could depose them. The emergence of modern democracy generally began with male citizens obtaining the right to vote in advance of female citizens, except in the Kingdom of Hawaii, where universal manhood and women's suffrage was introduced in 1840. However, a constitutional amendment in 1852 rescinded female voting and put property qualifications on male voting. In Sweden, conditional women's suffrage was in effect during the Age of Liberty, 1718 to 1772. Other possible contenders for first country to grant women suffrage include the Corsican Republic 1755, the Pitcairn Islands 1838, the Isle of Man 1881, and Franceville 1889 to 1890, but some of these operated only briefly as independent states and others were not clearly independent. In 1756, Lydia Taft became the first legal woman voter in colonial America. This occurred under British rule in the Massachusetts colony. In a New England town meeting in Uxbridge, Massachusetts, she voted on at least three occasions. Unmarried white women who owned property could vote in New Jersey from 1776 to 1807. In the 1792 elections in Sierra Leone, then a new British colony, all heads of household could vote and one third were ethnic African women. The female descendants of the Bounty mutineers who lived on Pitcairn Islands could vote from 1838. This right was transferred after they resettled in 1856 to Norfolk Island, now an Australian external territory, the seed for the first women's rights convention in the United States in Seneca Falls, New York was planted in 1840 when Elizabeth Cady Stanton met Lucretia Mott at the World Anti-Slavery Convention in London. The conference refused to seat Mott and other women delegates from the US because of their sex. In 1851, Stanton met temperance worker Susan B. Anthony, and shortly the two would be joined in the long struggle to secure the vote for women in the U.S. In 1868 Anthony encouraged working women from the printing and sewing trades in New York, who were excluded from men's trade unions, to form working women's associations. As a delegate to the National Labor Congress in 1868, Anthony persuaded the Committee on Female Labor to call for votes for women and equal pay for equal work. The men at the conference deleted the reference to the vote. In the U.S. women in the Wyoming Territory could vote as of 1869. Subsequent American suffrage groups often disagreed on tactics, with the National American Woman Suffrage Association arguing for a state-by-state -state campaign and the National Woman's Party focusing on an amendment to the U.S. Constitution. In 1881 the Isle of Man, an internally self-governing dependent territory of the British Crown, enfranchised women property owners. With this it provided the first action for women's suffrage within the British Isles. The Pacific Commune of Franceville, now Port Vila, Vanuatu, maintained independence from 1889 to 1890, becoming the first self-governing nation to adopt universal suffrage without distinction of sex or color, although only white males were permitted to hold office. Of currently existing independent countries, New Zealand was the first to acknowledge women's right to vote in 1893 when it was a self-governing British colony. Unrestricted women's suffrage in terms of voting rights women were not initially permitted to stand for election was adopted in New Zealand in 1893. Following a successful movement led by Kate Shepard, the Women's Suffrage Bill was adopted weeks before the general election of that year. The women of the British Protectorate of Cook Islands obtained the same right soon after and beat New Zealand's women to the polls in 1893. The self governing British colony of South Australia enacted universal suffrage in 1895, also allowing women to stand for the colonial parliament that year. The Commonwealth of Australia federated in 1901, with women voting and standing for office in some states. 
The Australian Federal Parliament extended voting rights to all adult women for federal elections from 1902 with the exception of Aboriginal women in some states. The first European country to introduce women's suffrage was the Grand Duchy of Finland in 1906. It was among reforms passed following the 1905 uprising. As a result of the 1907 parliamentary elections, Finland's voters elected 19 women as the first female members of a representative parliament, they took their seats later that year. In the years before World War I, women in Norway 1913 also won the right to vote, as did women in the remaining Australian states. Denmark granted women's suffrage in 1915. Near the end of the war, Canada, Russia, Germany, and Poland also recognised women's right to vote. The Representation of the People Act 1918 saw British women over 30 gain the vote, Dutch women in 1919, and American women won the vote on 26 August 1920 with the passage of the 19th Amendment the Voting Rights Act of 1965 secured voting rights for racial minorities. Irish women won the same voting rights as men in the Irish Free State Constitution, 1922. In 1928, British women won suffrage on the same terms as men, that is, for persons 21 years old and older. Suffrage of Turkish women introduced in 1930 for local elections and in 1934 for national elections. By the time French women were granted the suffrage in July 1944 by Charles de Gaulle's government in exile, by a vote of 51 for, 16 against, France had been for about a decade the only Western country that did not at least allow women's suffrage at municipal elections. Voting rights for women were introduced into international law by the United Nations Human Rights Commission, whose elected chair was Eleanor Roosevelt. In 1948 the United Nations adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 21 stated, one, "...everyone has the right to take part in the government of his country, directly or through freely chosen representatives, Three, the will of the people shall be the basis of the authority of government, this will shall be expressed in periodic and genuine elections which shall be by universal and equal suffrage and shall be held by secret vote or by equivalent free voting procedures." The United Nations General Assembly adopted the Convention on the Political Rights of Women, which went into force in 1954, enshrining the equal rights of women to vote, hold office, and access public services as set out by national laws. One of the most recent jurisdictions to acknowledge women's full right to vote was Bhutan in 2008 its first national elections. <laughs> Suffrage movements The suffrage movement was a broad one, encompassing women and men with a wide range of views. In terms of diversity, the greatest achievement of the 20th century woman suffrage movement was its extremely broad class base. One major division, especially in Britain, was between suffragists, who sought to create change constitutionally, and suffragettes, led by English political activist Emmeline Pankhurst, who in 1903 formed the more militant Women's Social and Political Union. Pankhurst would not be satisfied with anything but action on the question of women's enfranchisement, with deeds, not words. The organization's motto, throughout the world, the Women's Christian Temperance Union, WCTU, which was established in the United States in 1873, campaigned for women's suffrage, in addition to ameliorating the condition of prostitutes. Under the leadership of Frances Willard, the WCTU became the largest women's organization of its day and is now the oldest continuing women's organization in the United States." There was also a diversity of views on a "...woman's place". Suffragist themes often included the notions that women were naturally kinder and more concerned about children and the elderly. As Craditor shows, it was often assumed that women voters would have a civilizing effect on politics, opposing domestic violence, liquor, and emphasizing cleanliness and community. An opposing theme, Craditor argues, held that women had the same moral standards. They should be equal in every way and that there was no such thing as a woman's natural role. For black women, achieving suffrage was a way to counter the disfranchisement of the men of their race. Despite this discouragement, black suffragists continued to insist on their equal political rights. Starting in the 1890s, African American women began to assert their political rights aggressively from within their own clubs and suffrage societies. If white American women, with all their natural and acquired advantages, need the ballot, argued Adela Hunt Logan of Tuskegee, Alabama. 
How much more do black Americans, male and female, need the strong defense of a vote to help secure their right to life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness? Timeline By continent Africa Sierra Leone One of the first occasions when women were able to vote was in the elections of the Nova Scotian settlers at Freetown. In the 1792 elections, all heads of household could vote and one-third were ethnic African women. Women won the right to vote in Sierra Leone in 1930. <laughs> South Africa The franchise was extended to white women 21 years or older by the Women's Enfranchisement Act, 1930. The first general election at which women could vote was the 1933 election. At that election Layla Wrights, wife of Danies Wrights was elected as the first female MP, representing Parktown for the South African Party. The limited voting rights available to non-white men in the Cape Province and Natal Transvaal and the Orange Free State practically denied all non-whites the right to vote, and had also done so to non-Afrikaner Utlanders when independent in the 1800s were not extended to women, and were themselves progressively eliminated between 1936 and 1968. The right to vote for the Transke Legislative Assembly, established in 1963 for the Transke Bantistan, was granted to all adult citizens of the Transke, including women. Similar provision was made for the Legislative Assemblies created for other Bantistans. All adult colored citizens were eligible to vote for the Colored Persons Representative Council, which was established in 1968 with limited legislative powers. The council was, however, abolished in 1980. Similarly, all adult Indian citizens were eligible to vote for the South African Indian Council in 1981. In 1984 the tricameral parliament was established, and the right to vote for the House of Representatives and House of Delegates was granted to all adult colored and Indian citizens, respectively. In 1994 the Bantistans and the tricameral parliament were abolished and the right to vote for the National Assembly was granted to all adult citizens. Southern Rhodesia Southern Rhodesian white women won the vote in 1919 and Ethel Toss Jolly was elected to the Southern Rhodesia Legislature 1920–1928, the first woman to sit in any national Commonwealth Parliament outside Westminster. The influx of women settlers from Britain proved a decisive factor in the 1922 referendum that rejected annexation by a South Africa increasingly under the sway of traditionalist Afrikaner nationalists in favour of Rhodesian home rule or «responsible government». Black Rhodesian males qualified for the vote in 1923 based only upon property, assets, income, and literacy. It is unclear when the first black woman qualified for the vote. Asia Afghanistan Women have been able to vote in Afghanistan since 1965 except during Taliban rule, 1996–2001, when no elections were held. As of 2009, women have been casting fewer ballots in part due to being unaware of their voting rights. In the 2014 election, Afghanistan's elected president pledged to bring women equal rights. <inaudible> Bangladesh Bangladesh was mostly the province of Bengal in India until 1947, then it became part of Pakistan. It became an independent nation in 1971. Women have had equal suffrage since 1947, and they have reserved seats in parliament. Bangladesh is notable in that since 1991, two women, namely Sheikh Hasina and Begum Khalida Zia, have served terms as the country's Prime Minister continuously. Women have traditionally played a minimal role in politics beyond the anomaly of the two leaders, few used to run against men, few have been ministers. Recently, however, women have become more active in politics, with several prominent ministerial posts given to women and women participating in national, district and municipal elections against men and winning on several occasions. 
Choudhury and Hassanuzaman argue that the strong patriarchal traditions of Bangladesh explain why women are so reluctant to stand up in politics. <inaudible> India Women in India were allowed to vote right from the first general elections after the independence of India in 1947 unlike during the British rule who resisted allowing women to vote. The Women's Indian Association WIA was founded in 1917. It sought votes for women and the right to hold legislative office on the same basis as men. These positions were endorsed by the main political groupings, the Indian National Congress. British and Indian feminists combined in 1918 to publish a magazine STRI Dharma that featured international news from a feminist perspective. In 1919 in the Montague Kelmsford reforms, the British set up provincial legislatures which had the power to grant women's suffrage. Madras in 1921 granted votes to wealthy and educated women, under the same terms that applied to men. The other provinces followed, but not the princely states which did not have votes for men either, being monarchies. In Bengal province, the Provincial Assembly rejected it in 1921 but Southard shows an intense campaign produced victory in 1921. Success in Bengal depended on middle-class Indian women, who emerged from a fast-growing urban elite. The women leaders in Bengal linked their crusade to a moderate nationalist agenda, by showing how they could participate more fully in nation-building by having voting power. They carefully avoided attacking traditional gender roles by arguing that traditions could coexist with political modernization, whereas wealthy and educated women in Madras were granted voting right in 1921. In Punjab, the Sikhs granted women equal voting rights in 1925 irrespective of their educational qualifications or being wealthy or poor. This happened when the Gurdwara Act of 1925 was approved. The original draft of the Gurdwara Act sent by the British to the Sharamani Gurdwara Prabhandak Committee did not include Sikh women, but the Sikhs inserted the clause without the women having to ask for it. Equality of women with men is enshrined in the Guru Granth Sahib, the sacred scripture of the Sikh faith. In the Government of India Act 1935 the British Raj set up a system of separate electorates and separate seats for women. Most women's leaders opposed segregated electorates and demanded adult franchise. In 1931 the Congress promised universal adult franchise when it came to power. It enacted equal voting rights for both men and women in 1947. Indonesia <inaudible> 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 In the first half of the 20th century, Indonesia known until 1945 as Dutch East Indies was one of the slowest moving countries to gain women's suffrage. They began their fight in 1905 by introducing municipal councils that included some members elected by a restricted district. Voting rights only went to males that could read and write, which excluded many non-European males. At the time, the literacy rate for males was 11% and for females 2%. The main group who pressured the Indonesian government for women's suffrage was the Dutch Vereniging voor Vrouwenkirecht VVV Women's Suffrage Association which was founded in the Netherlands in 1894. They tried to attract Indonesian membership, but had very limited success because the leaders of the organization had little skill in relating to even the educated class of the Indonesians. When they eventually did connect somewhat with women, they failed to sympathize with them and thus ended up alienating many well-educated Indonesians. In 1918 the colony gained its first national representative body, the Volksrad, which still excluded women from voting. In 1935, the colonial administration used its power of nomination to appoint a European woman to the Volksrad. In 1938, the administration introduced the right of women to be elected to urban representative institutions, which resulted in some Indonesian and European women entering municipal councils. Eventually, the law became that only European women and municipal councils could vote, which excluded all other women and local councils. September 1941 was when this law was amended and the law extended to women of all races by the Volksrad. Finally, in November 1941, the right to vote for municipal councils was granted to all women on a similar basis to men with property and educational qualifications. Iran. In 1963, a referendum overwhelmingly approved by voters gave women the right to vote, a right previously denied to them under the Iranian Constitution of 1906 pursuant to Chapter 2, Article 3. 
Topic: Israel. Women have full suffrage since the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948. Topic: Japan. Although women were allowed to vote in some prefectures in 1880, women's suffrage was enacted at a national level in 1945. Korea South Korean women were granted the vote in 1948. Kuwait When voting was first introduced in Kuwait in 1985, Kuwaiti women had the right to vote. The right was later removed. In May 2005, the Kuwaiti parliament regranted female suffrage. Topic: <inaudible> Lebanon. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Pakistan. Pakistan was part of British Raj until 1947 when it became independent. Women received full suffrage in 1947. Muslim women leaders from all classes actively supported the Pakistan movement in the mid-1940s. Their movement was led by wives and other relatives of leading politicians. Women were sometimes organized into large-scale public demonstrations. In November 1988, Benazir Bhutto became the first Muslim woman to be elected as Prime Minister of a Muslim country. Philippines. Suffrage for Filipinas was achieved following an all-female, special plebiscite held on 30 April 1937. 447,725—some 90%—voted in favor of women's suffrage against 44,307 who voted no. In compliance with the 1935 Constitution, the National Assembly passed a law which extended the right of suffrage to women, which remains to this day. Saudi Arabia In late September 2011, King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz Al Saud declared that women would be able to vote and run for office starting in 2015. That applies to the municipal councils, which are the kingdom's only semi-elected bodies. Half of the seats on municipal councils are elective, and the councils have few powers. The council elections have been held since 2005 the first time they were held before that was the 1960s. Saudi women did first vote and first run for office in December 2015, for those councils. Salma bint Hazab al Odibi became the first elected female politician in Saudi Arabia in December 2015, when she won a seat on the council in Madraka in Mecca province. In all, the December 2015 election in Saudi Arabia resulted in 20 women being elected to municipal councils. The king declared in 2011 that women would be eligible to be appointed to the Shura Council, an unelected body that issues advisory opinions on national policy. This is great news, said Saudi writer and women's rights activist Wajaya Al Hawaider. Women's voices will finally be heard. Now it is time to remove other barriers like not allowing women to drive cars and not being able to function, to live a normal life without male guardians." Robert Lacey, author of two books about the kingdom, said, this is the first positive, progressive speech out of the government since the Arab Spring. First the warnings, then the payments, now the beginnings of solid reform." Quote, the king made the announcement in a five-minute speech to the Shura Council. In January 2013, King Abdullah issued two royal decrees, granting women 30 seats on the council, and stating that women must always hold at least a fifth of the seats on the council. According to the decrees, the female council members must be committed to Islamic Sharia disciplines without any violations, and be restrained by the religious veil. The decrees also said that the female council members would be entering the council building from special gates, sit in seats reserved for women and pray in special worshipping places. Earlier, officials said that a screen would separate genders and an internal communications network would allow men and women to communicate. Women first joined the council in 2013, occupying 30 seats. There are two Saudi royal women among these 30 female members of the assembly, Sarah bint Faisal al-Saud and Moody bint Khalid al-Saud. 
Furthermore, in 2013 three women were named as deputy chairpersons of three committees, Tharaya Obaid was named deputy chairwoman of the Human Rights and Petitions Committee, Zainab Abu Talib, deputy chairwoman of the Information and Cultural Committee, and Lubna Al-Ansari, deputy chairwoman of the Health Affairs and Environment Committee. Sri Lanka Sri Lanka at that time Ceylon was one of the first Asian countries to allow voting rights to women over the age of 21 without any restrictions. Since then, women have enjoyed a significant presence in the Sri Lankan political arena. The zenith of this favourable condition to women has been the 1960 July general elections, in which Ceylon elected the world's first woman Prime Minister, Sirimavobandaranayaka. She is the world's first democratically elected female head of government. Her daughter, Chandrika Kumaratunga also became the Prime Minister later in 1994, and the same year she was elected as the Executive President of Sri Lanka, making her the fourth woman in the world to hold the portfolio. Europe Austria It was only after the breakdown of the Habsburg monarchy, that Austria would grant the general, equal, direct and secret right to vote to all citizens, regardless of sex, in 1919. <inaudible> Azerbaijan Azerbaijan is known to be the first ever Muslim-majority country which enfranchised women. Universal voting rights were recognized in Azerbaijan in 1918 by the Azerbaijan Democratic Republic. Belgium A revision of the constitution in October 1921 it changed art. 47 of the Constitution of Belgium of 1831 introduced the general right to vote according to the «one man, one vote» principle. Art. 47 allowed widows of World War I to vote at the national level as well. The introduction of women's suffrage was already put onto the agenda at the time, by means of including an article in the Constitution that allowed approval of women's suffrage by special law meaning it needed a two-thirds majority to pass. This happened in March 1948. In Belgium, voting is compulsory but not enforced. Bulgaria. Bulgaria was liberated from Ottoman rule in 1878. Although the first adopted constitution, the Tarnovo Constitution 1879, gave women equal election rights, in fact women were not allowed to vote and to be elected. The Bulgarian Women's Union was an umbrella organization of the 27 local women's organizations that had been established in Bulgaria since 1878. It was founded as a reply to the limitations of women's education and access to university studies in the 1890s, with the goal to further women's intellectual development and participation, arranged national congresses and used Zhensky glass as its organ. However, they have limited success, and women were allowed to vote and to be elected only after when communist rule was established. Croatia. Czech Republic In the former Bohemia, taxpaying women and women in «learned profession» s were allowed to vote by proxy and made eligible to the legislative body in 1864. The first Czech female MP was elected to the Diet of Bohemia in 1912. Women were guaranteed equal voting rights by the constitution of the Czechoslovak Republic in 1920. Denmark In Denmark, the Danish Women's Society DK debated, and informally supported, women's suffrage from 1884, but it did not support it publicly until in 1887, when it supported the suggestion of the parliamentarian Frederick Bodger to grant women municipal suffrage. In 1886, in response to the perceived overcautious attitude of DK in the question of women's suffrage, Matilda Bodger founded the Kavendelig Freskritsforning or KF, 1886–1904 to deal exclusively with the right to suffrage, both in municipal and national elections, and in 1887, the Danish women publicly demanded the right for women's suffrage for the first time through the KF. 
However, as the KF was very much involved with workers' rights and pacifist activity, the question of women's suffrage was in fact not given full attention, which led to the establishment of the strictly women's suffrage movement Kvindevelgretsforningen in 1890, the KF and the Kvindevelgretsforeningen united with five women's trade workers' unions to found the Desamlied Kvindeforeninger, and through this form, an active women's suffrage campaign was arranged through agitation and demonstration. However, after having been met by compact resistance, the Danish suffrage movement almost discontinued with the dissolution of the Desamlied Kvindeforeninger in 1893. In 1898, an umbrella organization, the Danske Kvindeforeningers Valgretsforbund or DKV, was founded and became a part of the International Woman Suffrage Alliance. In 1907, the Landsforbundet for Kvinders Valgre was founded by Ilna Munch, Joanne Rambisch, and Marie Hagelmer in reply to what they considered to be the much too careful attitude of the Danish Women's Society. The LKV originated from a local suffrage association in Copenhagen, and like its rival DKV, it successfully organized other such local associations nationally. Women won the right to vote in municipal elections on April 20, 1908. However it was not until June 5, 1915 that they were allowed to vote in Rigsdag elections. <inaudible> Estonia Estonia gained its independence in 1918 with the Estonian War of Independence. However, the first official elections were held in 1917. These were the elections of Temporary Council i.e. Mapayev, which ruled Estonia from 1917 to 1919. Since then, women have had the right to vote. The parliament elections were held in 1920. After the elections, two women got into the parliament, history teacher Emma Assen and journalist Alma Ostra Oynas. Estonian parliament is called Rigikogu and during the First Republic of Estonia it used to have 100 seats. <laughs> Finland The area that in 1809 became Finland was a group of integral provinces of the Kingdom of Sweden for over 600 years. Thus, women in Finland were allowed to vote during the Swedish Age of Liberty 1718 during which suffrage was granted to tax-paying female members of guilds. The predecessor state of modern Finland, the Grand Duchy of Finland, was part of the Russian Empire from 1809 to 1917 and enjoyed a high degree of autonomy. In 1863, taxpaying women were granted municipal suffrage in the countryside, and in 1872, the same reform was given to the cities. In 1906, it became the first country in the world to implement full universal suffrage, as women could also stand as candidates. It also elected the world's first female members of parliament the following year. France. The 21 April 1944 Ordinance of the French Committee of National Liberation, confirmed in October 1944 by the French Provisional Government, extended the suffrage to French women. The first elections with female participation were the municipal elections of 29 April 1945 and the parliamentary elections of 21 October 1945. Indigenous Muslim. Women in French Algeria also known as Colonial Algeria, had to wait until a 3 July 1958 decree. <inaudible> Georgia Upon its declaration of independence on 26 May 1918, in the aftermath of the Russian Revolution, the Democratic Republic of Georgia extended suffrage to its female citizens. The women of Georgia first exercised their right to vote in the 1919 legislative election. Topic: <inaudible> Germany. Women were granted the right to vote and be elected from the 12th of November 1918. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Greece. In Greece, women over 18 voted for the first time in April 1944 for the National Council, a legislative body set up by the National Liberation Front resistance movement. Ultimately, women won the legal right to vote and run for office on May 28, 1952. The first woman MP was Eleni Skora, who was elected in 1953. Hungary 
In Hungary, although it was already planned in 1818, the first occasion when women could vote was the elections held in January 1920. Isle of Man In 1881, the Isle of Man in the British Isles but not part of the United Kingdom passed a law giving the vote to single and widowed women who passed a property qualification. This was to vote in elections for the House of Keys, in the island's parliament, Tinwald. This was extended to universal suffrage for men and women in 1919. Italy In Italy, women's suffrage was not introduced following World War I, but upheld by socialist and fascist activists and partly introduced by Benito Mussolini's government in 1925. In April 1945, the Provisional Government decreed the enfranchisement of women allowing for the immediate appointment of women to public office, of which the first was Elena Fischli Dreher. In the 1946 election, all Italians simultaneously voted for the Constituent Assembly and for a referendum about keeping Italy a monarchy or creating a republic instead. Elections were not held in the Julian March and South Tyrol because they were under UN occupation. The new version of Article 51 Constitution recognizes equal opportunities in electoral lists. <inaudible> Liechtenstein In Liechtenstein, women's suffrage was granted via referendum in 1984. <inaudible> <inaudible> Netherlands Women were granted the right to vote in the Netherlands on August 9, 1919. In 1917, a constitutional reform already allowed women to be electable. However, even though women's right to vote was approved in 1919, this only took effect from January 1, 1920. The women's suffrage movement in the Netherlands was led by three women, Aletta Jacobs, Wilhelmina Drucker and Annette Versloys Pullman. In 1889, Wilhelmina Drucker founded a women's movement called Vrije Vrouwen Vereniging Free Women's Union, and it was from this movement that the campaign for women's suffrage in the Netherlands emerged. This movement got a lot of support from other countries, especially from the women's suffrage movement in England. In 1906 the movement wrote an open letter to the Queen pleading for women's suffrage. When this letter was rejected, in spite of popular support, the movement organized several demonstrations and protests in favor of women's suffrage. This movement was of great significance for women's suffrage in the Netherlands. <laughs> Norway Liberal politician Gina Krog was the leading campaigner for women's suffrage in Norway from the 1880s. She founded the Norwegian Association for Women's Rights and the National Association for Women's Suffrage to promote this cause. Members of these organizations were politically well connected and well organized and in a few years gradually succeeded in obtaining equal rights for women. Middle class women won the right to vote in municipal elections in 1901 and parliamentary elections in 1907. Universal suffrage for women in municipal elections was introduced in 1910, and in 1913 a motion on universal suffrage for women was adopted unanimously by the Norwegian parliament Stortinget. Norway thus became the first independent country to introduce women's suffrage. <laughs> Poland Regaining independence in 1918 following the 123-year period of partition and foreign rule, Poland immediately granted women the right to vote and be elected as of 28 November 1918. The first women elected to the same in 1919 were, Gabriela Balica, Jadwiga Jubinska, Irena Kozmowska, Maria Mochidlowska, Zofia Moraczewska, Anna Piaseka, Zofia Sokolnica, and Franciska Vilchowiakowa. Portugal Carolina Beatriz Angelo was the first Portuguese woman to vote, in the Constituent National Assembly election of 1911, taking advantage of a loophole in the country's electoral law. In 1931 during the Estado Novo regime, women were allowed to vote for the first time, but only if they had a high school or university degree, while men had only to be able to read and write. In 1946 a new electoral law enlarged the possibility of female vote, but still with some differences regarding men. A law from 1968 claimed to establish, "...equality of political rights for men and women", but a few electoral rights were reserved for men. 
After the Carnation Revolution, women were granted full and equal electoral rights in 1976. Romania The timeline of granting women's suffrage in Romania was gradual and complex, due to the turbulent historical period when it happened. The concept of universal suffrage for all men was introduced in 1918, and reinforced by the 1923 Constitution of Romania. Although this constitution opened the way for the possibility of women's suffrage too Article 6, this did not materialize, the Electoral Law of 1926 did not grant women the right to vote, maintaining all male suffrage. Starting in 1929, women who met certain qualifications were allowed to vote in local elections. After the constitution from 1938 elaborated under Carol II of Romania who sought to implement an authoritarian regime the voting rights were extended to women for national elections by the Electoral Law 1939, but both women and men had restrictions, and in practice these restrictions affected women more than men the new restrictions on men also meant that men lost their previous universal suffrage. Although women could vote, they could be elected only in the Senate and not in the Chamber of Deputies Article 4 c. .The Senate was later abolished in 1940. Due to the historical context of the time, which included the dictatorship of Ion Antonescu, there were no elections in Romania between 1940–1946. In 1946, La No. 560 gave full equal rights to men and women to vote and to be elected in the Chamber of Deputies, and women voted in the Romanian general election, 1946. The Constitution of 1948 gave women and men equal civil and political rights Article 18. Until the collapse of communism in 1989, all the candidates were chosen by the Communist Party, and civil rights were merely symbolic under this authoritarian regime. Russia Despite initial apprehension against enfranchising women for the right to vote for the upcoming Constituent Assembly election, the League for Women's Equality and other suffragists rallied throughout the year of 1917 for the right to vote. After much pressure including a 40,000-strong march on the Tauride Palace, on July 20, 1917 the Provisional Government enfranchised women with the right to vote. San Marino San Marino introduced women's suffrage in 1959, following the 1957 constitutional crisis known as Fatty di Rovereta. It was however only in 1973 that women obtained the right to stand for election. Spain during the Miguel Primo de Rivera regime (1923–1930), only women who were considered heads of household were allowed to vote in local elections, but there were none at that time. Women's suffrage was officially adopted in 1931, despite the opposition of Margarita Nelkin and Victoria Kent, two female MPs, both members of the Republican Radical Socialist Party, who argued that women in Spain at that moment lacked social and political education enough to vote responsibly because they would be unduly influenced by Catholic priests. During the Franco regime, in the organic democracy type of elections called referendums. Franco's regime was dictatorial women over 21 were allowed to vote without distinction. From 1976, during the Spanish transition to democracy women fully exercised the right to vote and be elected to office. <inaudible> Sweden During the Age of Liberty 1718 Sweden had conditional women suffrage. Until the reform of 1865, the local elections consisted of mayoral elections in the cities, and elections of parish vicars in the countryside parishes. The Sakanstama was the local parish council who handled local affairs, in which the parish vicar presided and the local peasantry assembled and voted, an informally regulated process in which women are reported to have participated already in the 17th century. The national elections consisted of the election of the representations to the Riksdag of the estates. Suffrage was gender neutral and therefore applied to women as well as men if they filled the qualifications of a voting citizen. 
These qualifications were changed during the course of the 18th century, as well as the local interpretation of the credentials, affecting the number of qualified voters. The qualifications also differed between cities and countryside, as well as local or national elections. Initially, the right to vote in local city elections, mayoral elections was granted to every burgher, which was defined as a taxpaying citizen with a guild membership. Women as well as men were members of guilds, which resulted in women suffrage for a limited number of women. In 1734, suffrage in both national and local elections, in cities as well as countryside, was granted to every property-owning taxpaying citizen of legal majority. This extended suffrage to all taxpaying property-owning women whether guild members or not, but excluded married women and the majority of unmarried women, as married women were defined as legal minors, and unmarried women were minors unless they applied for legal majority by royal dispensation, while widowed and divorced women were of legal majority. The 1734 reform increased the participation of women in elections from 55 to 71 percent. Between 1726 and 1742, women voted in 17 of 31 examined mayoral elections. Reportedly, some women voters in mayoral elections preferred to appoint a male to vote for them by proxy in the city hall because they found it embarrassing to do so in person, which was cited as a reason to abolish women's suffrage by its opponents. The custom to appoint to vote by proxy was however used also by males, and it was in fact common for men, who were absent or ill during elections, to appoint their wives to vote for them. In 1758, women were excluded from mayoral elections by a new regulation by which they could no longer be defined as burghers, but women's suffrage was kept in the national elections as well as the countryside parish elections. Women participated in all of the eleven national elections held up until 1757. In 1772, women's suffrage in national elections was abolished by demand from the Burger estate. Women's suffrage was first abolished for taxpaying unmarried women of legal majority, and then for widows. However, the local interpretation of the prohibition of women's suffrage varied, and some cities continued to allow women to vote, in Kalmar, Voxo, Vastavik, Simrasham, Eastad, Amal, Karlstad, Bergslagen, Dalarna, and Norland. Women were allowed to continue to vote despite the 1772 ban, while in Lund, Uppsala, Skara, Abo, Gothenburg, and Marstrand, women were strictly barred from the vote after 1772. While women suffrage was banned in the mayoral elections in 1758 and in the national elections in 1772, no such bar was ever introduced in the local elections in the countryside, where women therefore continued to vote in the local parish elections of vicars. In a series of reforms in 1813–1817, unmarried women of legal majority, unmarried maiden, who has been declared of legal majority were given the right to vote in the Sakastama local parish council, the predecessor of the communal and city councils, and the Kirkorad local church councils. .In 1823, a suggestion was raised by the mayor of Strangnas to reintroduce women's suffrage for taxpaying women of legal majority unmarried, divorced and widowed women in the mayoral elections, and this right was reintroduced in 1858. In 1862, taxpaying women of legal majority unmarried, divorced and widowed women were again allowed to vote in municipal elections making Sweden the first country in the world to grant women the right to vote. This was after the introduction of a new political system, where a new local authority was introduced, the Communal Municipal Council. The right to vote in municipal elections applied only to people of legal majority, which excluded married women, as they were juridically under the guardianship of their husbands. In 1884 the suggestion to grant women the right to vote in national elections was initially voted down in Parliament. During the 1880s, the Married Woman's Property Rights Association had a campaign to encourage the female voters, qualified to vote in accordance with the 1862 law, to use their vote and increase the participation of women voters in the elections, but there was yet no public demand to women suffrage among women. In 1888, the temperance activist Emily Rathau became the first woman in Sweden to demand the right for women suffrage in a public speech. In 1899, a delegation from the Fredrika Bremer Association presented a suggestion of woman suffrage to Prime Minister Eric Gustav Bostrom. The delegation was headed by A. G. D. A. Montelius, accompanied by Gertrude Adelborg, who had written the demand. This was the first time the Swedish women's movement themselves had officially presented a demand for suffrage. In 1902 the Swedish Society for Woman Suffrage was founded. In 1906 the suggestion of women's suffrage was voted down in Parliament again. 
In 1909, the right to vote in municipal elections were extended to include also married women. The same year, women were granted eligibility to municipal councils, and in the following 1910–11 municipal elections, 40 women were elected to different municipal councils, Gertrude Manson being the first. In 1914, Amelia Brume became the first woman in the Legislative Assembly. The right to vote in national elections was not returned to women until 1919, and was practiced again in the election of 1921. For the first time in 150 years, after the 1921 election, the first women were elected to Swedish Parliament after the suffrage Kirsten Hesselgren in the upper chamber and Nellie Turing, Social Democrat, AGDA Ostland, Social Democrat, Elizabeth Tam, Liberal, and Bertha Wellen, Conservative, in the lower chamber. Karen Koch Lindbergh became the first female government minister, and in 1958, Ola Lindström became the first acting prime minister. <inaudible> Switzerland A referendum on women's suffrage was held on 1 February 1959. The majority of Switzerland's men voted against it, but in some French-speaking cantons women obtained the vote. The first Swiss woman to hold political office, Trudy Spath Schweizer, was elected to the municipal government of Rien in 1958. Switzerland was the last Western Republic to grant women's suffrage. They gained the right to vote in federal elections in 1971 after a second referendum that year. In 1991, following a decision by the Federal Supreme Court of Switzerland, Appenzell Innerrhoden became the last Swiss canton to grant women the vote on local issues. The first female member of the seven member Swiss Federal Council, Elisabeth Kopp, served from 1984 to 1989. Ruth Dreyfus, the second female member, served from 1993 to 1999, and was the first female president of the Swiss Confederation for the year 1999. From the 22nd of September 2010 until the 31st of December 2011, the highest political executive of the Swiss Confederation had a majority of female councillors, four of seven, for the three years 2010, 2011, and 2012. Switzerland was presided by female presidency for three years in a row. The latest one was for the year 2017. Topic: <inaudible> Turkey. In Turkey, Atatürk, the founding president of the republic, led a secularist cultural and legal transformation supporting women's rights including voting and being elected. Women won the right to vote in municipal elections on March 20, 1930. Women's suffrage was achieved for parliamentary elections on December 5, 1934, through a constitutional amendment. Turkish women, who participated in parliamentary elections for the first time on February 8, 1935, obtained 18 seats. In the early republic, when Atatürk ran a one-party state, his party picked all candidates. A small percentage of seats were set aside for women, so naturally those female candidates won. When multi-party elections began in the 1940s, the share of women in the legislature fell, and the 4% share of parliamentary seats gained in 1935 was not reached again until 1999. In the parliament of 2011, women hold about 9% of the seats. Nevertheless, Turkish women gained the right to vote a decade or more before women in such Western European countries as France, Italy, and Belgium—a mark of Atatürk's far-reaching social changes. United Kingdom The campaign for women's suffrage in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland gained momentum throughout the early part of the 19th century, as women became increasingly politically active, particularly during the campaigns to reform suffrage in the United Kingdom. John Stuart Mill, elected to Parliament in 1865 and an open advocate of female suffrage about to publish The Subjection of Women, campaigned for an amendment to the Reform Act 1832 to include female suffrage. Roundly defeated in an all-male Parliament under a Conservative government, the issue of women's suffrage came to the fore. Until the 1832 Reform Act specified, "...male persons." A few women had been able to vote in parliamentary elections through property ownership, although this was rare. In local government elections, single women ratepayers received the right to vote in the Municipal Franchise Act 1869. This right was confirmed in the Local Government Act 1894 and extended to include some married women. 
By 1900, more than one million single women were registered to vote in local government elections in England. In 1881, the Isle of Man in the British Isles but not part of the United Kingdom passed a law giving the vote to single and widowed women who passed a property qualification. This was to vote in elections for the House of Keys, in the island's parliament, Tinwald. This was extended to universal suffrage for men and women in 1919. During the later half of the 19th century, a number of campaign groups for women's suffrage in national elections were formed in an attempt to lobby members of parliament and gain support. In 1897, 17 of these groups came together to form the National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies who held public meetings, wrote letters to politicians and published various texts. In 1907 the NUWSS organized its first large procession. This march became known as the Mud March as over 3,000 women trudged through the streets of London from Hyde Park to Exeter Hall to advocate women's suffrage. In 1903, a number of members of the NUWSS broke away and, led by Emmeline Pankhurst, formed the Women's Social and Political Union. As the national media lost interest in the suffrage campaign, the WSPU decided it would use other methods to create publicity. This began in 1905 at a meeting in Manchester's Free Trade Hall where Edward Grey, 1st Viscount Grey of Falladon, a member of the newly elected Liberal government, was speaking. As he was talking, Christabel Pankhurst and Annie Kenny of the WSPU constantly shouted out, "'Will the Liberal government give votes to women?' When they refused to cease calling out, police were called to evict them and the two suffragettes as members of the WSPU became known after this incident were involved in a struggle which ended with them being arrested and charged for assault. When they refused to pay their fine, they were sent to prison for one week, and three days. The British public were shocked and took notice at this use of violence to win the vote for women. After this media success, the WSPU's tactics became increasingly violent. This included an attempt in 1908 to storm the House of Commons, the arson of David Lloyd George's country home despite his support for women's suffrage. In 1909 Lady Constance Lytton was imprisoned, but immediately released when her identity was discovered, so in 1910 she disguised herself as a working-class seamstress called Jane Wharton and endured inhumane treatment which included force-feeding. In 1913, suffragette Emily Davison protested by interfering with a horse owned by King George V during the running of the Derby, she was trampled and died four days later. The WSPU ceased their militant activities during World War I and agreed to assist with the war effort. The National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies, which had always employed constitutional methods, continued to lobby during the war years, and compromises were worked out between the NUWSS and the coalition government. The Speaker's Conference on Electoral Reform 1917 represented all the parties in both houses, and came to the conclusion that women's suffrage was essential. Regarding fears that women would suddenly move from zero to a majority of the electorate due to the heavy loss of men during the war, the conference recommended that the age restriction be 21 for men, and 30 for women. On 6 February 1918, the Representation of the People Act 1918 was passed, enfranchising women over the age of 30 who met minimum property qualifications. About 8.4 million women gained the vote in Great Britain and Ireland. In November 1918, the Parliament Qualification of Women Act 1918 was passed, allowing women to be elected into Parliament. The Representation of the People Equal Franchise Act 1928 extended the franchise in Great Britain and Northern Ireland to all women over the age of 21, granting women the vote on the same terms as men. In 1999, Time magazine, in naming Emmeline Pankhurst as one of the 100 most important people of the 20th century, states she shaped an idea of women for our time, she shook society into a new pattern from which there could be no going back." Oceania Australia The female descendants of the Bounty Mutineers who lived on Pitcairn Islands could vote from 1838, and this right transferred with their resettlement to Norfolk Island now an Australian external territory in 1856. Propertied women in the colony of South Australia were granted the vote in local elections but not parliamentary elections in 1861. Henrietta Dugdale formed the first Australian women's suffrage society in Melbourne, Victoria in 1884. 
Women became eligible to vote for the Parliament of South Australia in 1895, as were Aboriginal men and women. In 1897, Catherine Helen Spence became the first female political candidate for political office, unsuccessfully standing for election as a delegate to Federal Convention on Australian Federation. Western Australia granted voting rights to women in 1899, the first election for the Parliament of the newly formed Commonwealth of Australia in 1901 was based on the electoral provisions of the six pre-existing colonies, so that women who had the vote and the right to stand for Parliament at state level had the same rights for the 1901 Australian federal election. In 1902, the Commonwealth Parliament passed the Commonwealth Franchise Act, which enabled all women to vote and stand for election for the federal parliament, and also, four women stood for election in 1903. The Act specifically excluded natives from Commonwealth franchise unless already enrolled in a state, the situation in South Australia. In 1949, the right to vote in federal elections was extended to all indigenous people who had served in the armed forces, or were enrolled to vote in state elections Queensland, Western Australia, and the Northern Territory still excluded indigenous women from voting rights. Remaining restrictions were abolished in 1962 by the Commonwealth Electoral Act. Edith Cowan was elected to the Western Australian Legislative Assembly in 1921, the first woman elected to any Australian parliament. Dame Enid Lyons, in the Australian House of Representatives and Senator Dorothy Tangney became the first women in the federal parliament in 1943. Lyons went on to be the first woman to hold a cabinet post in the 1949 ministry of Robert Menzies. Rosemary Follett was elected Chief Minister of the Australian Capital Territory in 1989, becoming the first woman elected to lead a state or territory. By 2010, the people of Australia's oldest city, Sydney had female leaders occupying every major political office above them, with Clover Moore as Lord Mayor, Christina Keneally as Premier of New South Wales, Marie Bashir as Governor of New South Wales, Julia Gillard as Prime Minister, Quentin Bryce as Governor-General of Australia and Elizabeth II as Queen of Australia. <laughs> Cook Islands Women in Rarotonga won the right to vote in 1893, shortly after New Zealand. <inaudible> New Zealand New Zealand's Electoral Act of 19 September 1893 made this country the first in the world to grant women the right to vote in parliamentary elections, although the Liberal government which passed the bill generally advocated social and political reform, the Electoral Bill was only passed because of a combination of personality issues and political accident. The bill granted the vote to women of all races. New Zealand women were denied the right to stand for Parliament, however, until 1920. In 2005 almost a third of the members of parliament elected were female. Women recently have also occupied powerful and symbolic offices such as those of Prime Minister Jenny Shipley, Helen Clark and current PM Jacinda Ardern, Governor-General Catherine Tizard and Sylvia Cartwright, Chief Justice Sean Elias, Speaker of the House of Representatives Margaret Wilson, and from 3 March 2005 to 23 August 2006, all four of these posts were held by women, along with Queen Elizabeth as Head of State. The Americas Women in Central and South America lagged behind those in North America in gaining the vote. Ecuador enfranchised women in 1929 and the last was Paraguay in 1961. By date of full suffrage, there were political, religious, and cultural debates about women's suffrage in the various countries. Important advocates for women's suffrage include Hermila Galindo, Mexico; Eva Perón, Argentina; Alicia Moreau de Justo, Argentina; Julieta Lanteri, Argentina; Selena Guimarães Viana, Brazil; Ivan Guimarães, Brazil; Henrietta Muller, Chile; Marta Vergara, Chile; Lucila Rubio de la Verde, Colombia; Maria Correa Manrique, Colombia; Josefa Toledo de Aguirre, Nicaragua; Alida Campadonico, Panama; Clara González, Panama; Gumerchinda Paez, Panama. Panama, Paulina Lucy Janicki, Uruguay, Carmen Clemente Traviso, Venezuela. Topic: <inaudible> Canada. Women's political status without the vote was promoted by the National Council of Women of Canada from 1894 to 1918. It promoted a vision of transcendent citizenship for women. 
The ballot was not needed, for citizenship was to be exercised through personal influence and moral suasion, through the election of men with strong moral character, and through raising public spirited sons. The National Council position was integrated into its nation building program that sought to uphold Canada as a white settler nation. While the women's suffrage movement was important for extending the political rights of white women, it was also authorized through race based arguments that linked white women's enfranchisement to the need to protect the nation from racial degeneration. Women had local votes in some provinces, as in Ontario from 1850, where women owning property freeholders and householders could vote for school trustees. By 1900 other provinces had adopted similar provisions, and in 1916 Manitoba took the lead in extending women's suffrage. Simultaneously suffragists gave strong support to the Prohibition movement, especially in Ontario and the Western Provinces. The Wartime Elections Act of 1917 gave the vote to British women who were war widows or had sons, husbands, fathers, or brothers serving overseas. Unionist Prime Minister Sir Robert Borden pledged himself during the 1917 campaign to equal suffrage for women. After his landslide victory, he introduced a bill in 1918 for extending the franchise to women. On 24 May 1918, women considered citizens not Aboriginal women, or most women of colour became eligible to vote who were age 21 or older, not alien-born and meet property requirements in provinces where they exist." Most women of Quebec gained full suffrage in 1940. Aboriginal women across Canada were not given federal voting rights until 1960. The first woman elected to Parliament was Agnes MacPhail in Ontario in 1921. Topic: <laughs> United States. Before the 19th Amendment was passed in 1920, some individual US states granted women suffrage in certain kinds of elections. Some allowed women to vote in school elections, municipal elections, or for members of the Electoral College. Some territories, like Washington, Utah, and Wyoming, allowed women to vote before they became states. The New Jersey Constitution of 1776 enfranchised all adult inhabitants who owned a specified amount of property. Laws enacted in 1790 and 1797 referred to voters as he or she, and women regularly voted. A law passed in 1807, however, excluded women from voting in that state. Lydia Taft was an early forerunner in colonial America who was allowed to vote in three New England town meetings, beginning in 1756, at Uxbridge, Massachusetts. The women's suffrage movement was closely tied to abolitionism, with many suffrage activists gaining their first experience as anti slavery activists. In June 1848, Jarrett Smith made women's suffrage a plank in the Liberty Party platform. In July, at the Seneca Falls Convention in upstate New York, activists including Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony began a 70-year struggle by women to secure the right to vote. Attendees signed a document known as the Declaration of Rights and Sentiments, of which Stanton was the primary author. Equal rights became the rallying cry of the early movement for women's rights, and equal rights meant claiming access to all the prevailing definitions of freedom. In 1850, Lucy Stone organized a larger assembly with a wider focus, the National Women's Rights Convention in Worcester, Massachusetts. Susan B. Anthony, a resident of Rochester, New York, joined the cause in 1852 after reading Stone's 1850 speech. Stanton, Stone, and Anthony were the three leading figures of this movement in the U.S. during the 19th century, the triumvirate of the drive to gain voting rights for women. Women's suffrage activists pointed out that black people had been granted the franchise and had not been included in the language of the United States Constitution's 14th and 15th Amendments which gave people equal protection under the law and the right to vote regardless of their race, respectively. This, they contended, had been unjust. Early victories were won in the territories of Wyoming 1869 and Utah 1870. John Allen Campbell, the first governor of the Wyoming Territory, approved the first law in United States history explicitly granting women the right to vote. The law was approved on December 10, 1869. This day was later commemorated as Wyoming Day. On February 12, 1870, the Secretary of the Territory and Acting Governor of the Territory of Utah, S.A. Mann, approved a law allowing 21-year-old women to vote in any election in Utah. Utah women were disenfranchised by provisions of the federal Edmunds-Tucker Act enacted by the U.S. Congress in 1887. 
The push to grant Utah women's suffrage was at least partially fueled by the belief that, given the right to vote, Utah women would dispose of polygamy. It was only after Utah women exercised their suffrage rights in favor of polygamy that the U.S. Congress disenfranchised Utah women. By the end of the 19th century, Idaho, Utah, and Wyoming had enfranchised women after effort by the suffrage associations at the state level. Colorado notably enfranchised women by an 1893 referendum. During the beginning of the 20th century, as women's suffrage faced several important federal votes, a portion of the suffrage movement known as the National Woman's Party led by suffragist Alice Paul became the first «cause» to pick it outside the White House. Paul had been mentored by Emmeline Pankhurst while in England, and both she and Lucy Burns led a series of protests against the Wilson administration in Washington. Wilson ignored the protests for six months, but on June 20, 1917, as a Russian delegation drove up to the White House, suffragists unfurled a banner which stated, "'We women of America tell you that America is not a democracy. Twenty million women are denied the right to vote. President Wilson is the chief opponent of their national enfranchisement." Another banner on August 14, 1917, referred to, "'Kaiser Wilson." and compared the plight of the German people with that of American women. With this manner of protest, the women were subject to arrests and many were jailed. Another ongoing tactic of the National Woman's Party was Weich fires, which involved burning copies of President Wilson's speeches, often outside the White House or in the nearby Lafayette Park. The party continued to hold Weich fires even as the war began, drawing criticism from the public and even other suffrage groups for being unpatriotic. On October 17, Alice Paul was sentenced to seven months and on October 30 began a hunger strike, but after a few days prison authorities began to force feed her. After years of opposition, Wilson changed his position in 1918 to advocate women's suffrage as a war measure. The key vote came on June 4, 1919, when the Senate approved the amendment by 56 to 25 after four hours of debate, during which Democratic senators opposed to the amendment filibustered to prevent a roll call until their absent senators could be protected by pairs. The ayes included 36 Republicans and 20 Democrats. The nays comprised 8 Republicans and 17 Democrats. The 19th Amendment, which prohibited state or federal sex-based restrictions on voting, was ratified by sufficient states in 1920. According to the article, "'19th Amendment' by Leslie Goldstein from the Encyclopedia of the Supreme Court of the United States, "'By the end it also included jail sentences, and hunger strikes in jail accompanied by brutal force feedings, mob violence, and legislative votes so close that partisans were carried in on stretchers. Goldstein, 2008. Even after the 19th Amendment was ratified, women were still facing problems. For instance, when women had registered to vote in Maryland, "...residents sued to have the women's names removed from the registry on the grounds that the amendment itself was unconstitutional." Goldstein, 2008. Before 1965, women of color, such as African Americans and Native Americans, were disenfranchised, especially in the South. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 prohibited racial discrimination in voting, and secured voting rights for racial minorities throughout the U.S. Argentina The modern suffragist movement in Argentina arose partly in conjunction with the activities of the Socialist Party and anarchists of the early 20th century. Women involved in larger movements for social justice began to agitate equal rights and opportunities on par with men, following the example of their European peers, Elvira Delapian Rawson, Cecilia Grierson and Alicia Moreau de Justo began to form a number of groups in defense of the civil rights of women between 1900 and 1910. The first major victories for extending the civil rights of women occurred in the province of San Juan. Women had been allowed to vote in that province since 1862, but only in municipal elections. A similar right was extended in the province of Santa Fe where a constitution that ensured women's suffrage was enacted at the municipal level, although female participation in votes initially remained low. In 1927, San Juan sanctioned its constitution and broadly recognized the equal rights of men and women. However, the 1930 coup overthrew these advances. 
A great pioneer of women's suffrage was Giulietta Lanteri, the daughter of Italian immigrants, who in 1910 requested a national court to grant her the right to citizenship at the time not generally given to single female immigrants as well as suffrage. The Claros judge upheld her request and declared, "...as a judge, I have a duty to declare that her right to citizenship is enshrined in the Constitution, and therefore that women enjoy the same political rights as the laws grant to male citizens, with the only restrictions expressly determined such laws, because no inhabitant is deprived of what they do not prohibit." In July 1911, Dr. Lanteri were enumerated, and on November 26 of that year exercised her right to vote, the first Ibero-American woman to vote. Also covered in a judgment in 1919 was presented as a candidate for national deputy for the Independent Center Party, obtaining 1,730 votes out of 154,302. In 1919, Rogelio Araya UCR Argentina had gone down in history for being the first to submit a bill recognizing the right to vote for women, an essential component of universal suffrage. On July 17, 1919, he served as deputy national on behalf of the people of Santa Fe. On February 27, 1946, three days after the elections that consecrated President Juan Perón and his wife First Lady Eva Perón 26 years of age gave his first political speech in an organized women to thank them for their support of Perón's candidacy. On that occasion, Eva demanded equal rights for men and women and particularly, women's suffrage. The woman Argentina has exceeded the period of civil tutorials. Women must assert their action, women should vote. The woman, moral spring home, you should take the place in the complex social machinery of the people. He asks a necessity new organize more extended and remodeled groups. It requires, in short, the transformation of the concept of woman who sacrificially has increased the number of its duties without seeking the minimum of their rights. The bill was presented the new constitutional government assumed immediately after the May 1, 1946. The opposition of conservative bias was evident, not only the opposition parties but even within parties who supported Peronism. Eva Peron constantly pressured the parliament for approval, even causing protests from the latter for this intrusion. Although it was a brief text in three articles, that practically could not give rise to discussions, the Senate recently gave preliminary approval to the project August 21, 1946, and had to wait over a year for the House of Representatives to publish the September 9, 1947 Law 13010, establishing equal political rights between men and women and universal suffrage in Argentina. Finally, Law 13010 was approved unanimously. In an official statement on national television, Eva Perón announced the extension of suffrage to Argentina's women. Women of this country, this very instant I receive from the government the law that enshrines our civic rights. And I receive it in front of you, with the confidence that I do so on behalf and in the name of all Argentinian women. I do so joyously, as I feel my hands tremble upon contact with victory proclaiming laurels. Here it is, my sisters, summarized into few articles of compact letters lies a long history of battles, stumbles, and hope. Because of this, in it there lie exasperating indignation, shadows of menacing sunsets, but also cheerful awakenings of triumphal auroras. And the latter which translates the victory of women over the incomprehensions, the denials, and the interests created by the castes now repudiated by our national awakening and a leader who destiny forged to victoriously face the problems of our era, General Peron. With him, and our vote we shall contribute to the perfection of Argentina's democracy, my dear comrades." On 23 September 1947, they enacted the Female Enrollment Act no. 13010 during the first presidency of Juan Domingo Peron, which was implemented in the elections of November 11, 1951, in which 3,816,654 women voted 63.9% voted for the Justicialist Party and 30.8% for the Radical Civic Union. Later in 1952, the first 23 senators and deputies took their seats, representing the Justicialist Party. Topic: <inaudible> Brazil. Women were granted the right to vote and be elected in Electoral Code of 1932, followed by Brazilian Constitution of 1934. However, the law of Rio Grande do Norte state has allowed women to vote since 1926. The struggle for women's suffrage was part of a larger movement to gain rights for women. 
Topic: <laughs> Chile. Debate about women's suffrage in Chile began in the 1920s. Women's suffrage in municipal elections was first established in 1931 by decree, decreto con fuerza de ley. Voting age for women was set at 25 years. In addition, the Chamber of Deputies approved a law on March 9, 1933, establishing women's suffrage in municipal elections. Women obtained the legal right to vote in parliamentary and presidential elections in 1949. Women's share among voters increased steadily after 1949, reaching the same levels of participation as men in 1970. Topic: Mexico. The liberal Mexican constitution of 1857 did not bar women from voting in Mexico or holding office, but election laws restricted the suffrage to males, and in practice women did not participate nor demand a part in politics with framers being indifferent to the issue. Years of civil war and the French intervention delayed any consideration of women's role in Mexican political life, but during the Restored Republic and the Porfiriato women began organizing to expand their civil rights, including suffrage. Socialist publications in Mexico began advocating changes in law and practice as early as 1878. The journal La Internacional articulated a detailed program of reform that aimed at the emancipation, rehabilitation, and integral education of women. Quote, the era of the Porfiriato did not record changes in law regarding the status of women, but women began entering professions requiring higher education, law, medicine, and pharmacy requiring a university degree, but also teaching. Liberalism placed great importance on secular education, so that the public school system ranks of the teaching profession expanded in the late 19th century, which benefited females wishing to teach and education for girls. The status of women in Mexico became an issue during the Mexican Revolution, with Francisco I. Madero, the challenger to the continued presidency of Porfirio Díaz interested in the rights of Mexican women. Madero was part of a rich estate-owning family in the northern state of Coahuila, who had attended University of California, Berkeley briefly and traveled in Europe, absorbing liberal ideas and practices. Madero's wife as well as his female personal assistant, Soledad González, "...unquestionably enhanced his interest in women's rights." González was one of the orphans that the Maderos adopted, she learned typing and stenography, and traveled to Mexico City following Madero's election as president in 1911. Madero's brief presidential term was tumultuous, and with no previous political experience, Madero was unable to forward the cause of women's suffrage. Following his ouster by military coup led by Victoriano Huerta and Madero's assassination, those taking up Madero's cause and legacy, the Constitutionalists named after the Liberal Constitution of 1857 began to discuss women's rights. Venustiano Carranza, former governor of Coahuila, and following Madero's assassination, the first chief of the constitutionalists. Carranza also had an influential female private secretary, Hermila Galindo, who was a champion of women's rights in Mexico, in asserting his Carranza promulgated political plan Plan de Guadalupe in 1914, enumerating in standard Mexican fashion, his aims as he sought supporters. In the «additions» to the Plan de Guadalupe, Carranza made some important statements that affected families and the status of women in regards to marriage. In December 1914, Carranza issued a decree that legalized divorce under certain circumstances. Although the decree did not lead to women's suffrage, it eased somewhat restrictions that still existed in the civil even after the 19th century liberal reforma established the state's right to regulate marriage as a civil rather than an ecclesiastical matter. There was increased advocacy for women's rights in the late 1910s, with the founding of a new feminist magazine, Mujer Moderna, which ceased publication in 1919. Mexico saw several international women's rights congresses, the first being held in Mérida, Yucatán, in 1916. The International Congress of Women had some 700 delegates attend, but did not result in lasting changes, as women's suffrage made progress in Great Britain and the United States. In Mexico, there was an echo. Carranza, who was elected president in 1916, called for a convention to draft a new Mexican constitution that incorporated gains for particular groups, such as the industrial working class and the peasantry seeking land reform. It also incorporated increased restrictions on the Roman Catholic Church in Mexico, an extension of the anti-clericalism in the Constitution of 1857. 
The Constitution of 1917 did not explicitly empower women's access to the ballot. In the northern Mexican state of Sonora, Mexican women pushed for more rights for women, including the vote. Emilita Carrillo and school teacher Maria de Jesus Valdez led the effort. Notably, the movement for Mexican women's rights there was linked to the movement to exclude and expel Chinese in Mexico, racial essentialism that was also seen in the suffrage movement in the U.S., but generally not elsewhere in Latin America. In 1937, Mexican feminists challenged the wording of the Constitution concerning who is eligible for citizenship. The Constitution did not specify men and women. Maria del Refugio Garcia ran for election as a sole front for women's rights candidate for her home district, Uruapan. Garcia won by a huge margin, but was not allowed to take her seat because the government would have to amend the constitution. In response, Garcia went on a hunger strike outside President Lázaro Cárdenas' residence in Mexico City for 11 days in August 1937. Cárdenas responded by promising to change Article 34 in the constitution that September. By December, the amendment had been passed by Congress, and women were granted full citizenship. However, the vote for women in Mexico was not granted until 1953. The history and meaning of the women's vote in Mexico has been examined. Women gained the right to vote in 1947 for some local elections and for national elections in 1953. <inaudible> Venezuela After the 1928 student protests, women started participating more actively in politics. In 1935, women's rights supporters founded the feminine cultural group, known as ACF from its initials in Spanish, with the goal of tackling women's problems. The group supported women's political and social rights, and believed it was necessary to involve and inform women about these issues in order to ensure their personal development. It went on to give seminars, as well as founding night schools in the House of Laboring Women. Groups looking to reform the 1936 Civil Code of Conduct in conjunction with the Venezuelan representation to the Union of American Women called the First Feminine Venezuelan Congress in 1940. In this Congress, delegates discussed the situation of women in Venezuela and their demands. Key goals were women's suffrage and a reform to the Civil Code of Conduct. Around 12,000 signatures were collected and handed to the Venezuelan Congress, which reformed the Civil Code of Conduct in 1942. In 1944, groups supporting women's suffrage, the most important being Feminine Action, organized around the country. During 1945, women attained the right to vote at a municipal level. This was followed by a stronger call of action. Feminine Action began editing a newspaper called the Correo Civico Femenino, to connect, inform and orientate Venezuelan women in their struggle. Finally, after the 1945 Venezuelan coup d'état and the call for a new constitution, to which women were elected, women's suffrage became a constitutional right in the country. <laughs> <laughs> women's suffrage in non-religious organizations The right of women to vote has sometimes been denied in non-religious organizations, for example, it was not until 1964 that women in the National Association of the Deaf in the United States were first allowed to vote. <laughs> <laughs> Women's suffrage in religions <laughs> <laughs> Catholicism The Pope is elected by the College of Cardinals. Women are not appointed as cardinals, and therefore women cannot vote for the Pope. The female Catholic offices of abbess or mother superior are elective, the choice being made by the secret votes of the nuns belonging to the community. <laughs> Islam In the United States, some mosques have constitutions prohibiting women from voting in board elections. Judaism In conservative Judaism, Reform Judaism and other liberal Jewish movements women have the right to vote. Since the 1970s, more and more modern Orthodox synagogues and religious organizations have been granting women the rights to vote and to be elected to their governing bodies. In a few ultra-Orthodox Jewish communities women are denied the vote or the ability to be elected to positions of authority. 
Topic timelines Timeline of first women's suffrage in majority Muslim countries Timeline of women's suffrage Timeline of women's legal rights other than voting topic See also Anti-suffragism List of monuments and memorials to women's suffrage List of suffragists and suffragettes List of the first female holders of political offices in Europe List of women's rights activists Open Christmas letter Silent Sentinels Suffrage hikes Women's suffrage movement in Washington Women's suffrage organizations Women's work Women's suffrage parade of 1913 Notes Notes topic further reading Bach, Gisela. Das politische Denken des Suffragismus, Deutschland um 1900 im internationalen Vergleich, in, Gisela Bach, Geschlechtergeschichten der Neutzeit, Gating in 2014, 168–203. Bush, Julia. Women Against the Vote, Female Anti-Suffragism in Britain Oxford Up, 2007. Crawford, Elizabeth. The Women's Suffrage Movement, A Reference Guide, 1866–1928 Worldwide Coverage, 800 pp. Online Hannum, June, Mitzi Okterlani, and Catherine Holden. International Encyclopedia of Women's Suffrage ABC Clio Inc., 2000. Hannum, June. International Dimensions of Women's Suffrage, at the Crossroads of Several Interlocking Identities Women's History Review 14.3-4 543-560. Lloyd, Trevor, Suffragettes International, The Worldwide Campaign for Women's Rights New York, American Heritage Press, 1971. Markoff, John. Margins, Centers, and Democracy, The Paradigmatic History of Women's Suffrage, Signs 2003-29 No. 1 pp. 85–116 in JSTOR Owens, Rosemary Cullen. Smashing Times, A History of the Irish Women's Suffrage Movement, 1889–1922 Irish Books and Media, 1984. Rayburn, Antonia. Militant Suffragettes London, New English Library, 1973 on Great Britain Ramirez, Francisco O., Yasemin Soisal, and Suzanne Shanahan. The Changing Logic of Political Citizenship, Cross-National Acquisition of Women's Suffrage Rights, 1890–1990, American Sociological Review 1997-62 No. 5 pp. 735–45, in JSTOR topic United States Baker, Jean H. Sisters, The Lives of America's Suffragists. Hill & Wong, New York, 2005. ISBN 0-8090-9528-9. Dubois, Carol and Lynn Dumanil, eds. 1999. Through Women's Eyes, An American History with Documents, 456 475. Dubois, Ellen Carroll. Harriet Stanton Blatch and the Winning of Woman Suffrage New Haven and London, Yale University Press, 1997. ISBN 0-300-06562-0 Flexner, Eleanor, Century of Struggle, The Woman's Rights Movement in the United States, Enlarged Edition with Foreword by Ellen Fitzpatrick 1959, 1975, Cambridge and London, The Belknap Press of the Harvard University Press, 1996. ISBN 0-674-10653-9 Creditor, Aileen S. Ideas of the Woman Suffrage Movement, 1890–1920, 1965. Mackenzie, Midge, Shoulder to Shoulder, A Documentary New York, Alfred A. Knopf, 1975. ISBN 0-394-73070-4 External links Photo essay on women's suffrage by the International Museum of Women Women's Suffrage a World Chronology of the Recognition of Women's Rights to Vote and to Stand for Election". Suffrage in Canada CIA Yearbook, Suffrage Press release with respect to Qatar and Yemen UNCG Special Collections and University Archives Selections of American Suffragette Manuscripts Photographs of U.S. Suffragettes, Marches, and Demonstrations Ada James Papers and Correspondence 1915 A digital collection presented by the University of Wisconsin Digital Collection Center. Ada James was a leading a social reformer, humanitarian, and pacifist from Richland Center, Wisconsin and daughter of State Senator David G. James. The Ada James Papers document the grassroots organizing and politics required to promote and guarantee the passage of women's suffrage in Wisconsin and beyond. Women's suffrage in Germany 
The 19th of January 1919. First suffrage active and passive for women in Germany. Suffragists versus suffragettes. Brief article outlining origins of term suffragette. Usage of term and links to other sources. Women in Congress. Information about women who have served in the U.S. Congress including historical essays that cover suffrage. Culture Victoria — historical images and videos for the centenary of women's suffrage Woman suffragist, Mary Ellen Ewing vs. the Houston School Board — collection at the University of Houston Digital Library. Gail Olson Raymer — The Early Women's Movement 17-page teaching guide for high school students, Zinn Education Project, Rethinking Schools Women's Suffrage and Equal Rights in the Claremont College's Digital Library Select, "...suffrage", subject, at the Persuasive Cartography, the PJ Mode Collection, Cornell University Library Timeline and map of women's suffrage legislation state by state 1838–1919 Women of Protest – Photographs from the Records of the National Woman's Party Detailed chronology of National Woman's Asterisk Digitized items from the HTTPS colon slash slash www.loc.gov – Collections, National American Woman Suffrage Association, about this collection, National American Women's Suffrage Collection in the Rare Book and Special Collections Division of the Library of Congress <laughs>